Hello everyone and welcome. You have made it to unit 4.7 measurement. Give yourself a hand. Yay! Congratulations. Now, this is a recorded version of the online in-person session that we've done. So let's get started. I'm your uh, facilitator for this session right here, the virtual component, Tiffany Pierce. We also have Coach Muhammad who will be working alongside of myself to facilitate this online unit for 4.7. Let's get started with our overview. Whenever we begin a presentation, we always want to begin just by reintroducing ourselves to you. We have Coach Muhammad is one of the fourth grade numeracy coach, and then we have myself, Tiffany Pierce, who is an additional numeracy coach for fourth grade. Now we know that fourth grade is one of the focal areas within the county. As such, you have two coaches that you can reach out to. That's Muhammad and myself. Now let's get started taking a look at our elementary mathematics vision. The Prince George's County Public Schools Office of Elementary Mathematics strives to ensure that all students have access to equitable, rigorous, and engaging mathematics in order to inspire lifelong learners who explore the world around them and solve the problems of today and tomorrow. Throughout this accompanying uh, presentation you have here, you'll be able to see our vision and our mission. I would encourage you to read through the vision and the mission and just jot down any key things that you notice that really stand out to you. So go ahead and pause this video at this time and read through this, or you can view this at your own pace using the slideshow. Let's continue on to the next slide which will have the next part of our mission. Let's do the same thing. Jot down any key ideas or understanding that you see within the elementary mathematics vision. We always wanna make sure we are connecting what we are doing back to instruction, right? We're connecting our students to the instruction. Prince George's County Public Schools has a student learner profile. If you click on this link, it will take you directly here to discuss the why. The same will occur if you click on this link here where it says PGCPS Instructional Framework because that will tell you the how. As you're previewing this, make sure that you take a look and notice any key understanding what do you notice? What do you wonder? Here are the outcomes of the self-paced course. So this is why we're here today. This is why we are here to review the self-paced course. Participants will view the unit podcast and reflect on your beliefs about the content presented, including the big idea and the student objectives. Unpack the standards for the unit in order to determine what you will do to facilitate the learning in your classroom. Complete the milestone tasks for the unit to determine what your students will be expected to know and do as a result of engaging in your unit. Connect the strategies students will learn throughout the unit to tasks. When students engage in the daily lessons and activities. And complete the formative checkpoints to determine how students will show their understanding and progress through each lesson series. That's right. We want you to do the math. You do the milestones. You do the formative checkpoints and even the expert tasks. Do the task in, throughout the unit, inside of the unit, so that you are familiar 
with the instructional strategies and instructional implications that will be there before you even teach your students. Now, make sure that you click on Unit 4.7 Measurement because this will allow you to view the video. Now let's think about Unit 4.7 Measurement. What personal beliefs come to mind as you plan this unit? What professional beliefs come to mind as you plan for this unit? And in what ways might your beliefs impact instruction? The big idea. So measurement is a comparison of identified attributes such as length, or weight. Measurement is a comparison of identified attributes such as length to length or weight to weight using predetermined units. Measurement units can be decomposed into smaller units and used interchangeably. The unit objectives. Students will use conversion tables for measurement units in length, weight, liquid volume and time in both metric and U.S. customary units. Students write and apply conversion rules for various measurement systems. Students apply concepts and formulas for formulas for area and perimeter to solve problems. Students understand what an angle is and they measure angles with protractors. Students solve problems using anger measurements. Students use addition or subtraction to find unknown angle measures. Students use addition or subtraction to find unknown angle measures. As you go through this unit, there are content standards that are here for your students. So you want to make sure that as you are going through this overview, as you're going through what needs to be included inside of your unit, you're very familiar with this. We have the standards listed here for you. Please make sure that you read through them. And I wanna also point out that there are unpacking documents that you can share with your students. So when you're doing your unpacking document, they're also unpacking the standards that you need to be using or utilizing with your students. There's an unpacking the standards document that you need to be utilizing as you are planning your lesson. So you'll see here for grade four, we have domain measurement and data. And as you go through the section that talks about unpacking the standards, this is where we're going to refer back to in order to do this task. So for the unit description, inside of each unit, there is a description. And the description says the following. This unit is divided into three parts. The first part focuses on measurement units for length, metric, and U.S. customary, weight, metric, and U.S. customary, liquid volume, U.S. customary, and time. Students use conversion tables to express larger units in terms of smaller ones. They fill out conversion tables and determine the conversion rules. They apply these rules to word problems. Each day, students are introduced to new measurement systems, but the unifying concept is that larger units of measure are made up of smaller units of measure. While students are not expected to memorize the less common conversion rates, they are expected to familiarize themselves with various conversion rates for length and weight. The second part of this unit focuses on applying an understanding of area and perimeter rectangles to solve multi-step problems that include the measurement units learned in this unit. The third part of this unit is going to focus on angle measurement. Angles are defined as rotations of runway. Angles are defined as rotations of one ray. Angles are defined as rotations of one ray away from another along an axis. 
Angle measures are additive. That means when two angles share a common ray and the angle measure of both angles is known, you can add the measures of each angle to find the measure of the combined angle. Similarly, if two angles share a common ray and the combined angle measure and the measure of one angle are known, you can subtract to find the measure of the unknown angle. Students learn the definitions of obtuse, acute, and right angles, as well as how to measure angles using a protractor. This will apply, they will apply this knowledge in the analysis of polygons in the next unit of study. So my students are progressing through this unit. They're gonna begin with measuring units for length using a conversion table to convert measurement and create rules, metric and customary. Wanna make sure we're focusing on them creating the rules versus us just saying, here's the rule, this is what you must do. While we follow a very uh, constructivist theory behind learning where students are constructing and creating their own knowledge, we're presenting them with opportunities to do so. So that's why we have them creating the rules for converting instead of just having them come right out and saying exactly what that conversion is or they're not presented with the rule first, they need to uncover that rule. Students should develop an understanding that large units of measure are made up of many smaller units of measure. I'm going to read that one more time. Students should develop an understanding that larger units of measure are made up of many smaller units of measure. Students then apply their previous knowledge of area perimeter to calculate area and perimeter specifically in real world situations and create a rule for doubling and tripling the area and perimeter. Students identify, measure, and then create those angles. They are required to decompose larger angles into two smaller angles, connecting the understanding that a larger angle is indeed made from two smaller angles. As we go through the unit 4.7, here's the breakdown. Lesson series one, lesson series two, and lesson series three. I'm gonna pause the video at this time or you're gonna refer back to the slideshow. We are currently on slide 15. Following along with your slide deck. Please read over this. And again, if you make it your own, you're able to go in, highlight, you're printing it, you can print it, highlight it, but just make sure that you are breaking down some key words and some key phrases within this video or within this particular <laughs> lesson series breakdown. All right, so as you're going through this, you also wanna keep in mind that we do have a unit planning document you should be utilizing to complete your planning before you are beginning a unit. You're really digging deep into this unit. And that's why we're here today, is we are uncovering key things within each lesson series. So within lesson series one, some of the things that some of the students or rather the teachers caught out during our in-person session was they noticed lesson series one had conversion table. They know it was talking about expressing larger units of measurements, understanding that those larger units of measurement can be expressed with the smaller units of measurement. We talked about length, weight, liquid measurement, how the metric system uses magnitudes of 10, similar to our base 10 system. And you use that to convert larger units into smaller ones. And lesson series two, they noticed it was talking about area, perimeter, irregular polygons, decomposing, the subtractive process, 
what the definition of area is, how it's expressed, what the definition of perimeter is, and how that's expressed as well. And lesson series three, we talked about angles, right? Talked about using that protractor to measure the angles and then understanding that the rotation of run, <laughs> the rotation of one ray away from another is considered a fraction of a circle. And therefore, every degree is 136. So we also learned that students learn that angles can be added and also subtracted. Okay, so this concludes our overview. We're going to continue in our next lesson. Okay, so this concludes our overview. We're going to continue in our next video segment with the milestone.